There is nothing that is at once so simple and beautiful as a piece of well-made pottery. It represents one of man's most ancient skills. A few, such as Maria Martinez and her son Popovi Day, raised pottery making to a high and respected art. Near their home in the Pueblo of San Ildefonso in the Black Mesa country of New Mexico, Maria and Popovi Day gather the clay with which to make their celebrated black pottery, one of several types they made employing ancient techniques. First, Maria casually scatters sacred corn, an offering to the Great Spirit for providing the raw clay. When we go to get the clay, we have to get ready some blue cornmeal and throw it to the clay. So the Great Spirit will help us and give us our strength and good pottery and for that we have to ask for all our people. We not just go and get the clay, we have to ask Great Spirit. Uh -huh. All the old folks they do, all the Indians they do. At another site in the area, blue sand is gathered. Mixed with clay, the sand acts as a binder. We believe in working in harmony with nature. We do not allow ourselves more material than just what is actually becomes necessary to serve our purpose. Equal amounts of red clay and blue sand are mixed together. Water is added, is slowly and carefully worked into the clay until the mass is pliable. The amount of moisture is critical, too little and the clay crumbles. Too much, and the clay will not bind. Next, strong and experienced hands knead the clay, pounding, dividing, pressing. Air bubbles are worked out, and the mass becomes cohesive and smooth. It is not used right away, but is set aside for a day during which it is periodically kneaded so as to ensure an even texture throughout. It becomes very plastic. This step is deceptive in that it appears simple. Strength and dexterity as well as experience are required to properly judge the condition of the clay. Finally, the clay is ready for use. A ball of clay is flattened, tortilla-like, and set onto a supporting base called a pokey. 
This may be a piece of broken pottery or a form made specially for the purpose. The pokey helps form the base of the vessel being made. Coils are made by rolling the clay between the palms. These rope coils, as they are called, are used to build up the walls of the pottery piece. The more coils, the higher or larger the piece. Care is taken to pinch the coils tightly together so as not to entrap air bubbles. Maria, in her mid-80s at the time these films were made, recalls how she learned the potter's art. I learned it from my aunt, Nicolasa. Nicolasa was the sister of my mother, and my mother didn't make no pottery, but I learned it from my aunt. Long time. You see, I didn't have much school. So I don't talk much English. Just came to the third grade and that's all. We have to be very careful for the clay. We have to take care of it because we know how we got it and how we ask them to give us. Various shaped scrapers made from gourds are used to form and smooth the pottery. The work is turned to keep the line symmetrical. Deft touches with moistened, experienced fingers model the clay into its final shape. The work requires patience and great skill.
Shaped pottery is taken out to air dry in the sun, and nothing more is done until the piece is completely dry. Then it's ready for polishing. An earth-colored clay in semi-liquid form, called a slip, is applied. Four or five coats are used, and only as much area is covered as can be polished before the slip dries completely. Should the slip dry before polishing is completed, streaks will show up after the firing. Polishing stones come from creek beds, where fast running water has rounded and smoothed them. It takes many years of constant use before the polishing stone acquires a truly smooth finish and becomes a prized possession. Many of the stones used by Maria were used previously by her aunt. Popovi Day used these same polishing stones, as does his son, who was also an accomplished potter. The high gloss finish characteristic of this pottery is a result of the painstaking hand polishing. The potters of San Ildefonso do not use glazes. Long time they used to make black pottery too, but not fire so nice, no polish so nice. They just make black pottery to use. But later on I find out that when I make a high polished one that I cowed down touch and it came black, black. And I got the high polish because I worked hard and take long to polish. And when the pot is already polished, then they put a designer. I don't put designer. The decoration is uh, done with another earth color, which would be the same uh, material as your red clay that we used as a slip. Although this is light in color to enable us to see what we are decorating on the surface of the pot. And the brush that we use is made out of a yucca leaf. When we need new brushes, we just go out and gather these leaves and bring them on in. And one end is softened, and the number of fiber strands that one leaves on the yucca leaf itself determines the width of the lines which you will have on your design. So the outlining is done completely with a yucca leaf brush. Two colors actually serves a dual purpose. At the beginning, it provides the opportunity to see what we are creating in way of a design or pattern. Secondly, also, after we have created our design on the pottery pieces, when fired for black, it turns to a matte finish. Now, the design that I may use in decorating a pot would be one that would fit the mood of the pot. I'm governed by the shape of the pot and perhaps what I would feel in my own mind would be something uh, that would be in keeping with the form of the pot. Three or four times a year, the pottery made during the previous weeks is brought outside for firing. The conditions required? A dry, absolutely calm day. Even the slightest breeze could cause uneven firing. The careful building of the fire mound usually begins early in the morning. A raised iron grate supports the pottery. Each piece is positioned face down on the grate. While the edges may touch, they cannot press too tightly together or the surface will mar. 
Each piece must rest solidly in place, since shifting as the fire burns down will also ruin the finish. Maria supervises this crucial step while Popovi Day fits each piece onto the stack. Often it takes an hour or so to stack the pieces for firing. Dry cedar wood is placed under the grate for kindling. Any wood containing pitch would leave a mark on the pottery surface, so cedar is all that is used. Here, too, the work is unhurried. An enclosure is built around the pottery using pieces of scrap metal. In historic times, large pieces of broken pottery were used for this purpose. Except for the use of metal, however, the firing technique has remained almost the same for hundreds of years. Air vents are left at intervals. These are opened or closed during firing to control the heat of the fire. Should a breeze stir, the vents on that side are closed to shut off excess draft, which would cause uneven heating. This seemingly crude outdoor firing method permits more precise pinpoint control than is possible with most modern kilns. There's great care and time is taken to make certain that every piece that we do comes out to meet our approval. So great care is taken in, in preparation for firing This is the last time, if the firing is successful, that the pottery will appear in its natural earth color. Dried cow chips, collected and stored during the summer for this purpose, are placed about the mound. It is the burning cow chips which actually fuel the fire. Again, the placement is not casual or haphazard. The draft vents are left free, and care is taken that no cow chip, and thus an open flame, touches the pottery. The idea is to surround the pottery with heat, not flames which could mar the surface. Yes. 
Maria's sister, by tradition in the Martinez family, always starts the fire. She walks slowly about the grate, lighting the kindling on all sides. The dry cedar crackles in the still air, igniting the cow chips. And for the next hour or so, the fire burns briskly. Until recently, it was believed the temperatures reached were in the neighborhood of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Recent tests, however, using kill temperature cones, indicate much higher heat is attained. It is found that we used or fire our pottery pieces around 12 to 1400 Fahrenheit. All of this is determined only by actual experience. Finally, and the time is determined solely by experience, the fire is smothered. If the fire were left to burn its course at this point, the pottery would be fired a red-brown. However, if the black pottery for which Maria is so well known is desired, the fire must be smothered soon after the cow chips have been ignited. Dried, powdered horse manure is banked over the fire. It is the high carbon content of the manure, smoldering over the hot ashes, which turns the earth-colored pottery jet black. The mound is completely covered as Popovi Day darts in and out of the smoke to plug flare-ups, tiny volcano-like eruptions caused by the internal heat, before an open flame develops. Ashes from previous firings are also used to help smother the fire. For nearly three hours, Popovi Day works with the fire. Long time we have to have, we had a hard time firing black powder. When the wind is blowing, then they don't fire good. But now I find myself to cover it with, with ashes and keep every smoke in tight until the, the manure is all burned down. And we have to see if any smoke when no smoke, then we take them out. And the ashes help to keep, to cool the powder. Finally, it is time to open the mound. The pieces are ready for removing from the actual firing. And this is a great moment for every one of us because we ourselves do not know what we are going to have from one firing to the next. So it, it's a very tense moment. Also, we must understand that it could be disheartening too if we find that a greater percentage of our pottery pieces uh, when uncovered, I found broken. Of course, this sometimes uh, will not show until you examine them better under a stronger light. The fine hairline crack that sometimes do come to the surface because of sudden exposure to the cold air. Working deftly with sticks, Popovi Day and his mother Maria remove the still hot pottery from the coals. Piece by piece, the gleaming black San Ildefonso pottery emerges from the ashes. The skilled and painstaking craftsmanship, as well as the design integrity, 
produce pieces which are sought after by museums and private collectors alike. While the monetary value of handmade, outdoor-fired pottery has risen sharply in recent years, it is the pride of workmanship and the desire to create something of lasting beauty, which motivates most of the few remaining Indian potters. With understated pride, Popovi Day said, This particular firing was very successful. We're very happy and very pleased with the results. And here you just simply forget all of the things which you've undergone, such as inhaling all the smoke, perhaps getting your arms singed a little. Uh, this is all behind when you have a successful find.